Fortnite season three is the most disliked of the chapter, but weirdly also the most loved. How could half of players be enjoying it while the other half is quitting? It's a fascinating question that's answered in season three's most hated changes. The Nitro Fist lets you dodge bullets by dashing around, get really close to an enemy, then overpower them with punches. Most players are starting to use these instead of shotguns because they're simply more versatile. If your enemy tries to outbuild you, well... While it feels busted watching that clip, you can make the argument that it also looks really fun to use, and that is what many players are resonating with. They're controversial, but nowhere near cars. If you haven't caught on by now, it's pretty obvious they are the meta this season. Fortnite clearly dropped items like Nitro Fists and Dashing so that we could still fight on the ground, but 9 times out of 10, you are sent back to the lobby by vehicles. This is thanks to every car having thousands of health to encourage battles, and with repair boxes everywhere, they're almost unstoppable. The only count is to hop in a car of your own, but then you come across people in boss cars. These have more health, unlimited nitro, and insane attachments. Instead of high pressure, skill based fights, it's now a race to see whose car blows up first. The next thing you'll hear is that season 3 is anti building, and they're not wrong. Everything goes straight through walls. For example, when you're fueled up on nitro, shoulder bashing becomes impossible to fight. Popping this, gonna dash right through, and I just cracked him. Wow, what? <laughs> And it's not surprising the players are freaking out when your average game looks like this. Why are you running? Why are you running? There's a theme I'm pointing out here, but for now, what is needed to make the angry players happy? They're demanding for EMPs to get involved in. I have to agree with them. Right now, the only way to disable vehicles is if you're driving a war bus. If Fortnite did this, it would give players on the ground a way to defend themselves and add a little more strategy to the meta. The meta isn't the only thing players are complaining about. Sweat and casual players all hate the most broken glitch in Fortnite. If you're in the turret seat when the car blows up, you won't get eliminated. In fact, you're rewarded with a guaranteed win. Thanks to this glitch, you don't take any storm damage, so you can just wait it out until no one's left. Bruh. And it's pretty weird that the most obvious collab in Fortnite history didn't actually happen. Season 3 dropped on May 24th, and on the same day, the Mad Max prequel came to theaters. Both of them are set in a desert wasteland where warriors fight each other in scrap cars. In fact, players have been calling this the Mad Max season because it's that similar, and yet we logged in to find no trace of a crossover. It was almost too perfect. Instead, fans are left scratching their heads wondering why Magneto is the secret outfit over Furiosa or Mad Max. Now I have to shout out Epic for a second here because when they removed augments, they said they would experiment with them in the future. And that vision has finally come to life in the form of Wastelander challenges. Instead of perks, augments are now debuffs, like making health and shields not usable or making you take damage from touching the ground. Probably some of the most creative and unique challenges we've had. And while it's awesome, a ton of Fortnite players are struggling because of it. They're not explained very well, making it super easy to accidentally give yourself one. Let's be honest, no one reads challenges before we accept them. We just want to add things to our checklist to move on. Kind of our own fault, but at the same time, who expects a quest to punish them for accepting it? Personally, I do not want to see these removed because they are really fun when you know what you're getting yourself into. Let's just uh, make it easier to understand for the average player though. But everyone agrees that Ringmaster Scar's medallion, it could use a nerf. This thing gives you infinite ammo and increased damage, which already sounds overpowered, but it's even more busted in practice. Once you eliminate her and pick it up, you also grab the keys to her boss vehicle, which has a mini gun on top. Think about it, not only do you have a car with unlimited nitro at a turret, but you also have a medallion that gives you infinite ammo. That means when your turret overheats, you can just switch to the passenger seat and keep shooting with a nitro boosted fire rate. It's like a storm of bullets that never ends. You also might have seen a ton of backlash over season 3's battle pass. On page 1, they included a Lego build that is basically useless to battle royale players. Fans were not happy about this, but you don't have to worry. Fortnite already saw this coming. Turns out the Lego build doesn't take up a slot. It's a bonus reward that you're given just for buying the pass, and you don't even need to spend battle stars on it. Personally, I agree more with the other problem, the lack of cars. In season one, we got the scorpion in the pass, with tons of decals taking up an entire page. But now we're in a season where it's impossible not to hop in a vehicle, and there's nothing. The only SUV right now is in the item shop. If you prefer to destroy vehicles rather than buy them, the boom bolt is one of the only weapons that can pull it off. These are designed
designed to take out cars, and yet they only take rocket ammo. It's notoriously the hardest type of ammo to find, which makes it really hard to justify carrying a boom bolt when you need Ringmaster Scar's medallion just for it to be usable. The gun is already pretty balanced because it's not insane against players, it is clearly meant for vehicles. Maybe it just needs to use sniper ammo or something. The problem everyone agrees on is buried under the wasteland, and we dropped into season 3 already knowing what to expect. Thanks to the leaked concept art, we all got excited over the idea of a new train plowing through the desert at top speed. It looked crazy. After all, the last train wasn't known for its usefulness, so we needed a change. We should have been careful what we wish for, as season 3 fixed the train problem by removing it entirely. Would have been cool to see an updated version, but I guess it was too complicated or something. An item fans didn't want to see is now terrorizing them for the third season in a row. For the whole year, the Frenzy Auto Shotgun has been stupidly overpowered and people hated it. When they found out season 3 was around the corner, they couldn't wait to see it replaced by a different item. So sure enough, we logged in and the Frenzy Auto was nowhere to be found. That's until they realized Oscar was on the map. He's an NPC that you could duel, and in return, you would get the mythic Frenzy Auto. Not only did Fortnite keep the most powerful shotgun in the game, they removed all the other ones, and now only one person gets to have it and conquer the match. Earlier, I mentioned how Furiosa is nowhere to be seen, and fans are baffled that Magneto is the secret outfit instead. This is part of a trend that has been confusing players for the last two chapters, Fortnite adding secret skins that don't make sense. Ahsoka appeared in a heist season, Dr. Strange joined a war effort, and Korra was in a past full of Greek mythology. Now it's happened again, but it feels like Epic has taken this feedback. Despite Magneto having nothing to do with a Mad Max style season, they tried their best giving us a totally original Wastelander Magneto. His cape has even been reversed to fit the climate, a detail you gotta appreciate. Honestly, if we can't stop the random collabs, designing them to fit the theme is a way better option. Getting back to the meta issues, one item keeps being brought up. We talked about how the community thinks EMPs will fix everything, but what about the anvil launcher? They already unvaulted this in chapter 5 and it was totally useless. Barely anyone used cars and it locked out to an invincible train, so why would anyone pick it up? Well now it's gone right as we drop into a season full of vehicles. This could definitely be a game changer, but players think it needs a little bit of adjusting. Thanks to cars having thousands of health, the anvil would need a massive buff. I think maybe an EMP effect with it could hit two birds with one stone. But a truly missed opportunity is hiding in the battle pass. When Fortnite revealed that Power Armor was coming to the game, it broke the internet. I mean, we've been asking for a Fallout collab for years now, and seeing it come to life is something special. Except one of the T60's edit styles is inspired by Black Knight, because anyone who wears this in the Brotherhood of Steel is called the Knight. It was meant to be a cool reference to Fallout, but some fans ended up disappointed. Why couldn't Fortnite make the Power Armor customizable? You know, like Tuna Fish from Chapter 3. Not gonna lie, it would have been pretty cool. One thing I don't understand is the Battle Pass getting pushed back from players. After coming off a season where every single outfit was themed and had unique abilities, we are back to a wacky pass with no cohesion. I'm not gonna lie, I freaking love this battle pass. Peabody is awesome, and Megalodon truly feels like a classic tier 100 outfit. But some fans feel like half the pass are just remixes, like Bright Raider or Rust, who is just an advertisement for the upcoming Metallica collab. And when it comes to those armored buses, players are getting frustrated about it. Turns out, Season 3's bosses love to go on random excursions and won't just stay in one place. If your normal spot is a boss POI, there's a huge chance you'll land here, and the entire reason for dropping is in a convoy on the other side of the map. And it is crazy how a problem that has been happening for years is continuing to haunt us in Season 3. Fortnite loves to throw as many new features and items as possible in their trailers, yet this always ends up being drip-fed to us later in the season. Throughout the trailer, you can see a minigun, laser rifle, harpoon gun, a ton of items that are not in-game. Not only does it spoil future updates, it can be frustrating to get hyped when you have no idea what's actually in game or not. They've been doing this since the dawn of time, so we don't expect them to stop, but fans will continue to bring it up. Out of everything I talked about, what is making players quit while also making players love the season? It's that right now the game doesn't feel like Fortnite, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. On one side, the game feels fresh and fun, while the other side feels like the game they loved just isn't the same anymore. What side are you on? It's been Tommy, and keep it here on Top 5 Gaming.